What's going on, everybody? It's me, Working Man. And uh, I thought I would give my thoughts on, you know, Acolyte episodes 1 through 4. Uh, as you can see by the thumbnail, I have discovered the true identity of Smilo Ren. Yes, he is the yump from Pulp Fiction. As you can see, there's no, di uh, there's no doubt. It's the same guy. <clears throat> but seriously, though... Uh, as for who I think uh, Smilo Ren really is, uh, I believe it's probably Asian Ezra Miller or one of the moms. You know, it's, uh, I mean, Asian Ezra Miller makes the most sense considering uh, they were both on the planet. Uh, whenever he uh, supposedly went out to find the Wookiee Jedi, he uh, came back and was like, oh, you know, I risked my life so that way you could find him and kill him. But. I mean, come on, we know that, I mean, he probably assumed that uh, May or whatever was going to betray him, so I'm thinking, you know, he went out there, killed the Wookiee, and, you know, I don't know, maybe this is some kind of test for her. I mean, honestly, I don't even know why he's trying to train her or test her like this. You know, it's like in episode one when, you know, he's like, uh, you know, kill the dream or whatever. He's like, can't kill a Jedi with steel or saber or laser. And uh, he, you know, like, I don't know, says kill the dream, which I assume maybe, like, they're trying to expose the Jedi as corrupt or something. But, yeah, I was thinking it'd be really funny if, and I know they don't have the balls to do this, but... You know, if they're trying to make the Jedi look bad, then let's go all the way. You know, like, say, uh, the four Jedi that went to the Witch Planet, uh, you know, Saul, Wookiee Jedi, Trinity, and, uh, the White Kid or whatever, you know, like, say, uh, they're, like, really corrupt, you know, like, you know, like some, like, Harvey Weinstein kind of Jedi or something, you know, like, they were doing some fucked up stuff with kids or something, and, uh, you know, or say they each had their own little fucked up thing, you know, uh, like, the Wookiee Jedi ate people, uh, Trinity was, uh, I don't know, abusive or something, and then you could have, uh, like, Saul be a pedophile, and then you could have, uh, the other one, I don't know, maybe, like, he's, uh, I don't know, like, a bestiality freak or something, you know? Like, really just have him be fucked up. And, uh, you know... <sighs> yeah, like, that'd be, that'd be a good, you know, like, way to have people be like, oh yeah, fuck these Jedi, let's get them killed or whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, uh... I don't know, there are just a lot of stupid things in the show, like, you know, in episode one, you know, of course you got the fire in space, you know, makes no fucking sense. Uh, apparently, every time she sees fire, she has PTSD over, you know, uh, her house burning down, which was made of, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but that building the witches lived in, was it a dam? It looked like a dam on top of a, you know, like a mountain, which is weird, because why the fuck would a, a dam be on top of a mountain? I mean, that's what it looked like, right? I mean, am I wrong? But, uh, anyway, yeah, I would say probably the most likable character in the entire show, and I'm surprised I'm even saying this, is, uh, the idiot, uh, Yord or whatever, who, like, the actor is stupid, how he's like, oh, Anakin destroyed the Death Star, and we all know when Anakin it was Slurpo, Slurpo destroyed the Death Star, and, uh, yeah, basically, uh, you know, like, his character was pretty likable, you know, like, he, uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of Obi-Wan, but maybe a little more goofy or something, you know, I mean, and I feel bad for the guy, because, like, he, he's, like, doing everything by the books and everything, and he's like, yeah, we should probably put her in handcuffs and everything, because she's a criminal, but everyone around her, whether it's Saul or the little X-23 chick or whatever, you know, he's like, uh, let's put her in handcuffs. Saul's like, ah, nah, don't worry about it. You know, don't be scared. And, you know, I'm thinking, well, oh, who said that? Um, oh, yeah, it was Doctor Who, uh, Matt Smith. 
he said that, you know, fear keeps us alive, you know, it keeps us sharp. And, you know, but this guy, he's like, nah, he's like, nah, don't be scared, you know. Just because she's a deadly criminal that killed Trinity or whatever, you know, nah, you got nothing to worry about. Bullshit. I mean, for all you know, this woman could fucking kill you at any minute. That'd be like if, uh, like, I was a cop and then, you know, we had, like, someone in custody and they were like, yeah, you took out, uh, like a fucking, I don't know, UFC fighter or something, but we're not gonna handcuff him, you know, just... Just trust him. He'll be he'll be fine. You know? Uh, you know what? Give him a gun. Let, yeah, give him a gun, too. And, uh, you know, let's, let's just trust him. No, I'm not going to do that. But, yeah, I think it would be kind of cool if, uh, like, you know, since they're trying to make the Jedi more like cops or whatever, you know, let, let's make them, like, corrupt cops, too. That'd be, that'd be cool. You know, like, if, uh, say, like, when Yord busts someone, like, in the, he's like, stop resisting arrest! And then, like, takes out his lightsaber, or, well, he doesn't ignite the lightsaber, he just grabs it by, like, the end of the hilt, and then, like, breaks their teeth out or something, like it's a nightstick. And he'll be like, bop, 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 just knock their fucking teeth out, and then be like, stop resisting arrest! <laughs> but yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And, uh, you know, if you want to, you know, get a little controversial, you know, have him choke someone out, and be like, you know, have, like, you know, the alien be like, I can't breathe, man, I can't breathe! And he's like, you know, just pressing on his neck and shit. But yeah, uh, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I like controversial stuff like that. You know, I think it's funny. Sort of like the boys, you know, like, you know, they, uh, you gotta make fun of it or whatever. I mean, and if you get butt hurt over it, then, you know, clearly you have issues that you need to work on or whatever. I mean, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? But anyway, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, this show, like, it's almost dumb enough to be funny, but at the same time, it's very weird. Like, you know, so, like, anyway, in episode one, uh, yeah, we had the fire in space. Uh, oh, yeah, we had uh, uh, May be arrested. Um, you know, basically, uh, they're on the transport ship <laughs> with one robot, which, if... Uh, if you look at the robot, like, it's really weird, because, like, it looks like they put, like, a, like an ass on the robot, and then, like, they put, like, kind of a big groin, too, like, almost like it was, like, a sex robot or something, it was really weird, like, it almost looked like it was built sort of like C-3PO, but, like I said, it, it had, like, a big round ass on it, and, uh, it had, like, a big crotch on it, but, yeah, it was, like, kind of a buff C-3PO, and then, uh, you know, of course... I don't know why, but yeah, they decide, you know, hey, we're not going to, you know, take her directly to the council. No, we'll just put her on this prison ship. Hopefully she doesn't escape, you know, even though she's been trained to use the Force, which, that's another thing. You know, once uh, they break out of their cells and shit, and, uh, you know, like, she tries to use the Force, which, I don't know why she couldn't use the Force. I mean, she'd only been, let's see, how long did they say she was you know, not a Jedi, like, four years or eight years, something like that. I mean, if you trained, let's see, I think they said she was, like, a Jedi for, like, 16 years or some shit like that. You know, you'd think you could, you know, use force pull, force push. I mean, those are, like, the most basic of force moves. I mean, hell, uh, Luke was able to use force pull and stuff like that, and he had, like, very, well, actually, you know what? I don't think Luke really had any training at that point, like, uh, on Hoth, when he's in the cave and, uh, he pulls the lightsaber to him, because, uh, you know, that was, like, pretty much right after, you know, uh, the first movie, I mean, I don't know how long after, but there was no one to train him, like, he hadn't trained with Yoda or anything, so, you know, I don't know how he knew how to use force pull, unless... You know, Obi-Wan visited him as a ghost, and he's like, you know, you gotta do this, you know, you gotta feel it, something like that. But yeah, anyway, and that's another thing that kind of annoys me about the show, is how uh, her droid can basically do anything. It can put out fires in space, it can pick locks, it can taser, it can spray water, um, I think it can weld shit, I and mean, it's basically like the ultimate droid or whatever, and why more people don't have these things, I don't know. I don't know.
But anyway, yeah, so, you know, she gets out of her cell because, you know, she's lucky enough that the, her little pip droid or whatever falls out of the locker, you know, and lands right by her cell, and she can't use the Force, but, you know, luckily it rolls even closer then, you know, for some reason, it has, like, something on it to where it can open a lock, I guess. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Then she sees the guy getting, you know, fucked by a starfish, and, you know, which, I don't know why they put that in Star Wars. I mean, that's one of those things, like, you know, if we're gonna go weird, or, you know, go, like, hardcore, then let's go all the way, not just half ass it, you know, with this sexual starfish thing, or whatever, you know? And, uh, also, yeah, after she frees him, like, the dude, he just runs em immediately to a, you know, evacuation pod or whatever, and, you know, how the hell does that guy know where the evacuation pod is, or where the fuck he is? I mean, you'd think you would be all groggy and shit, waking up, like, you know, what the fuck happened, because that starfish was, like, fucking with his mind and stuff, but, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> So yeah, anyway, uh, she sees the ship going down, and then uh, she basically, you know, was like, oh, I can't pilot the ship, even though later on they mentioned something about she does have some ability to, like, or she knows how ships work. So you would think uh, she would have some basic knowledge as to how to autopilot or, hell, like, maybe reactivate those droids, something. You know, instead of being like, let me move this cargo so I can strap myself in as I fall from orbit, you know, and then, you know, somehow she lands and the ship doesn't explode and she doesn't have a scratch on her, so she's completely fine, you know, and this is another thing that I don't get it. They, they make the sound of the little starfish alien scurrying around, but they don't show it. I mean... I think that's that would have been the smart thing to do, is if, like, during the crash, it latched onto her face, and that's why we got the visions of her sister or something. I mean, although you'd think, you know, if it did latch onto her, it would be some kind of sexual vision or something, you know? Like, she either, you know, she has the hots for some dude or some chick. We don't know what her sexual preference is. I mean, it seems like she's into women. I don't know why, but... Well, I guess I do know why, because the show was written by a lesbian, and so that means every woman has to be a lesbian. I mean, they try to set up, like, some sort of weird chemistry between the Padawan and uh, Osha, which is weird. I mean, she's like, oh, I'm flexible, you know, I can spread my vagina all over your face, and you can fuck me with those horns or whatever, and I'm like, what the fuck? Anyway, so, yeah, like, uh, you know, she runs out of the ship, you know, even though she wanted to get caught by the Jedi, because she said she trusted him, and then, you know, uh, Yord and the others show up, and they're like, yeah, she's probably dead, you know, no one could survive a crash from space, and, you know, Saul's like, ah, no, nah, she's fine, you know, uh, you know, she's, you know, magic black girl, she'll, she'll be fine, you know, and then, uh, you know, of course, they find her on a ledge somehow. I don't know how they tracked her. Because, I mean, it's a, it's a big planet. You know, they don't, like, follow her footprints or anything. But, yeah, then they do the scene from uh, The Fugitive. You know, which I think would be really funny. I mean, like I said, you know, if we're going to go, like, into funny, like, lean into it. You know, because clearly this is, like, just like that scene from The Fugitive. When she's like, I didn't do it. And, you know, the Tommy Lee Jones is like, I don't care. You know, and I think it would have been funny if, uh, when she said, you know, I didn't do it, like if, uh, Yord was back there and he's like, I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, because, like, he even tells her, like, you're under arrest. And she's like, I didn't do it. But, and then Saul's like, oh, I believe you, you know, I just, I just believe you, you know. And, you know, of course, the reason I say, you know, Saul could be the pedophile Jedi is because, you know, like, later on he's looking at, like, picture of her as a young one, and uh, her, the Padawan comes in, she's like, you know, should you be having that? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's fine, you know, I use it to remember the past, and she's like, but doesn't that lead to the dark side? And he's like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. But, yeah, so, anyway, of course, uh, they try to handcuff her, but, you know, Saul's like, no, 
don't put handcuffs on her, you know. It might be uh, interpreted as a racist or something. What? No. She's a deadly criminal. Put some fucking handcuffs on her. Anyway, so... Yeah, that, that's pretty much episode one. Episode two... I'm trying to remember what the fuck happened. Uh, I think that's the one where she tries to kill the old man... Or, I'm sorry, the old young man. You know, and she breaks into the temple with, you know, the most lackluster security I've ever seen. You know, apparently she hires a starving child to throw a puck onto a uh, droid, which I don't know why she couldn't have done that herself. Um, then she, you know, goes into the temple, just walks right on in, and, uh, you know, she walks right past another Jedi, and, you know, she has her mask on and shit, and you would think that someone with common sense would be like, why do you have a mask on? Or, you know, it'd be like if I walked into a fucking police station wearing a fucking ski mask, they would be like, hey, hey, who the fuck are you? You know? I mean, stupid. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, she can't beat up the floating Jedi, because somehow he's able to put up a 24-hour force field, and, I don't know, somehow, like, it's like he's in a coma state, but at the same time, he's not, because he can hear and sense people and stuff. And also, I guess he never has to go to the bathroom, he never has to eat, you know? I mean, that's something that I think Asian Ezra Miller should have said, is like, you know, well, how does he go to the bathroom? How does he eat, you know? And as soon as he eats, he can be, like, put the toxic masculinity in his food or something, you know? By the way, yeah, that's what that, you know green shit look like. It looked like some toxic masculinity or something. I mean, it was just the dumbest shit ever. Like, you know, like, oh, uh, he wants to die, so, you know, just give him death, you know? I mean, if that was the case, then why didn't he just let her, you know, stab him or whatever, or, you know, be like, here, take this kunai and shove it in your throat or something. But yeah, apparently, uh, you know, he wanted to die, you know? I guess he had fucked enough animals in his lifetime, and or maybe he was scared that, you know, the truth would get out that he was a, you know, an animal abuser or some shit. But yeah, anyway, so after that, um, I'm trying to remember what the fuck happened. Uh, oh yeah, they think she did it, but she's like, oh, I didn't do it. And then, uh, you know, they, oh yeah, they do that stupid plan. And, you know, that's another thing, like, uh, Yord, he says, like, you know, why don't we set up a, per a perimeter, I go in, I talk to the guy, I tell him he's under arrest, and, you know, we take him back to the ship, question him, whatever. He's like, if I need to tase him, I'll tase him. And, uh, then, and this would piss me off. Yeah, the paddle one, she's like, oh, well, we're not gonna do any of that. What we're gonna do is, uh, get, you know, May here to dress like her sister and go in there, which... Do they even know the sister is alive at this point? I mean, I think they assume she is, but they don't know 100%. But anyway, yeah, so they're like, we'll wrap this cloth around you, and then you go in and talk to the guy, and, uh, you know, of course, you know, like, I mean, what if the sister had changed her hair a little bit, or what if she talks different, which she does, you know? So basically, you know, she would go in, and that's the thing, like, she's like, hi... And uh, Asian Ezra Miller is like, hi, like, you know, who are you? Or like, you know, what's going on? You're acting a little weird. And uh, of course, yeah, she ends up like acting weird. And then once he gets up close, he's like, oh, he's like, you are a different person or whatever. Oh, I forgot. He does say some shit that apparently incriminates him. I think he says, uh, you know, oh, did you use that poison they gave you or something like that? Or uh, I guess you didn't need the poison or something. And, uh, so, yeah, they come in, they bust the guy, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa he's like, I'll tell you anything you want to know, and blah, 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 you know. I mean, I'm assuming the guy is, you know, fucking Smile or Ren, I mean, you know, because he just acts too goofy and everything, and, uh, you know, I'm thinking he's putting it on as an act, so people will be like, oh, no, no fucking way he could be the Sith Lord or whatever. <clears throat> but, yeah, uh... So yeah, oh yeah, and there's that scene where the, the big fat Jedi, which, I don't know how you're a Jedi if you're big and fat, that doesn't make any sense to me, 
Uh, but yeah, he's holding this little girl who looks like she's starving. And I guess and that's like some kind of visual, like, kind of, what do they call it? Um, you know, when like, it's like a message through imagery or whatever. You know, because he got the corrupt fat Jedi and the starving little orphan child thing. So I'm assuming they're like, oh yeah, look at this big fat piece of shit, you know. He's corrupt and everything. Meanwhile, you got this little criminal girl who's innocent and she's starving or whatever. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much what I picked up off of it. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, that's another thing is there's a scene where uh, May tries to stab Asian Ezra Miller and, uh, you know, he, like, disarms her, like, very easily. Because, I mean, if this guy is, just, like, the big goofball and all that, there ain't no way he could have stopped her. You know, just, no. He had Jedi reflexes. <clears throat> I mean, like I said, it, it still could be one of the mothers. That makes a lot of sense, too, because I don't believe we saw their dead bodies in Episode 3. You know, there was just a whole lot of witches on the ground. But yeah, anyway, so he's like, oh, you know, we're going to go to the forest planet and kill us a Wookiee or whatever. Uh, then pretty much, uh, oh yeah, uh, her sister has a chance to stun her, and she doesn't take the shot for some reason. Or, well, no, she does take a shot, but she throws it on purpose. She's like, oh, I'm going to shoot up here to the left. And then I think Saul sees it, and he's like, you know, ah, oh, you bitch. Uh, but, yeah, he still trusts her, even though, like, he uh, saw her, you know, miss the shot on purpose. But, anyway, so, they, or, uh, I think episode three starts after that. And then you got the two little girls, um... I don't know, like, if this was in Star Wars before. I've never seen it. You know, I've never been... I was never big on Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels or any of the books or anything. But, yeah, they, there's something called the Bunta Tree, which uh, I assume has something to do with Bunta Eve, like they said in Episode 1. I don't know if that's, like, Star Wars Christmas or something, or... I don't know. But, uh... Yeah, like the little girl's choking the butterfly, and then her sister starts choking the butterfly, and she gets upset, like, stop choking the butterfly, and she's like, well, you did it first, you know, but no, nah, that's not what she says, you know, I think, I don't even remember what the fuck they say, because, I mean, that was like the most boring episode ever, uh, so yeah, they show, uh, Saul being a pervert, he's like peeking out behind a tree, watching the two little girls, which, that's why I say it, you know, I think Saul's a pedophile Jedi. Jedi, I mean, it makes the most sense. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, anyways, uh, the girls, you know, they go and talk to their mother, or mothers. Uh, one of them looks like Darth Maul. Uh, the other one's just generic black witch lady. Um, for some reason, they have some sort of weird swirl on their head, which I forgot to mention. Uh, you know... The evil twin, uh, May, she has a, a swirl on her forehead. I don't know what that is. You know, apparently it's part of some kind of ritual. Which, I mean, I think a lot of people would agree that was one of the dumbest scenes in Star Wars. You know, it really makes Jar Jar Binks look like, you know, Machiavelli or something. You know, just fucking, uh, you know, the power of one, the power of two. The power of many. Oh, 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 oh. But yeah. And then uh, the Jedi show up and they're like, we know you have children here. Hand over the children. You know, we're not going to molest them. We promise. And then, you know, like, she's like, come on out. Come on out, children. And then, uh, you know, Saul, he's like, I know how to lure children out. So he takes his lightsaber out, and he's like, here, ooh, look at this, a deadly weapon. And he's like, you want to get in the back of my van, you know? And uh, the children are like, yeah, this is awesome. Let me point it on my face and everything. And, you know, surprise, like, one of the other Jedi didn't say anything. Like, what the hell are you doing? That's a deadly weapon. But, yeah, apparently the witches, they're like, fine, you can test the children, even though we're not under Republic law or whatever. And, uh, so yeah, they take the kids in the back of the spaceship, and then they show, her, show them some images, and, you know, uh, apparently, uh, 
I don't know. We didn't see what happened with the first kid, uh, you know, uh, May, you know, probably no Saul or the Wookiee might have diddled her or something, you know, and maybe that's why she turned out evil. Um, but yeah, and then we see, uh, they test, what's her name, they take her blood, and, you know, they, uh, ask her, like, oh, what do you see on the screen, and she's like, oh, I don't know, some bullshit, and then she's like, yeah, that's right, that's right, and then she's like, oh, no, that's not right, oh, shit, I blew my cover, yeah, all right, you got me, and then, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know why she even bothered lying, I mean, you know, she didn't want to be there with their fucking fucked up sister and her mothers who are bitches and apparently don't know what the force is. They call it, you know, a string or something, you know. And then uh, you got the scene where uh, the, the witches are trying to teach the little girls about the string. And she's like, if you use two witches, it's stronger. But, you know, apparently one witch was still able to defeat two witches. So, you know, that, that didn't make any sense. But anyway, so yeah, uh, apparently the Jedi did something weird. We don't know what they did. I think they somehow sabotaged the reactor and maybe killed the witches, but we don't see it happen. We see uh, uh, Osha packing her bags, and uh, her sister's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And she's like, what? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to fucking burn you alive in your room. And she takes her book and closes the door. And then, for some reason, there's a candle inside of a wall or something, and uh, it didn't make any sense, because, I mean, I thought this place ran on electricity, but no, it's somehow there's a candle in the wall, or a lantern or whatever, and then, you know, she lights the book on fire, throws it at the ground, and then all of a sudden, like, the fire spreads like the house is fucking made out of kindling. I mean, it's just, like, instantly... <laughs> You know, I mean, what the fuck are these walls made of? I thought they were stone, not fucking gasoline or something. Anyway, yeah, uh, then the little girl starts sparking some wires together, uh, OSHA or whatever, and uh, it makes no fucking sense because, one, I mean, how does she know how to do this? And two, uh, why is there a hole in her wall? I mean, it's just some random ass hole. I mean, it makes no sense. But anyway, yeah, so she climbs through the hole, and then somehow it leads to the reactor room or whatever, and her sister is like, what did you do? And then she's like, what did you do? And then she's like, you killed our mom. And she's like, no, I didn't. And, you know, apparently the reactor explodes, and I don't know, for some reason Saul just happened to be there. It makes no sense, unless he was the one who sabotaged it or whatever. I don't know, maybe he smelled children and came running or something, who knows. But yeah, he doesn't use his force powers to save both the kids. No, he just was like, oh, I'll grab one. He's like, then I'll let the other fall. We only need one anyway. Anyway. So yeah, he saves the kid, or saves uh, Osha, and then, you know, tells her a story, like, oh, your sister, you know, burnt the building down and killed your mothers and all that shit. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the end of that episode. And then, uh, we get to the most recent episode, episode four, and, uh, you know, I've heard a lot of people online talking about this. They were like, oh, it would have been so cool to see a Wookiee with a lightsaber. And to me, I don't know, I don't think it would have been that cool. I mean, it would have just been like a hairy man with a lightsaber. I mean, I don't, don't know what's so great about that. But, uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, apparently the word is that they didn't have the budget to fucking film a Wookiee with a lightsaber. I mean, what? You had $180 million and you didn't have the budget for a man in a fuzzy suit holding a fake ass light, or a fake lightsaber with some CGI effect on it. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And this episode is weird, because it feels like it goes by, like, super quick. And there's a bunch, there's still a bunch of stupid stuff in it. You know, uh, Asian Ezra Miller, he's, uh, he's acting very weird, you know. He's, uh, you know, like, oh, you know, you need to please the master. I'm not the master, by the way, you know. I'm, 
I just, uh, I know everything about him, except for what he looks like, you know, and I know what he wants. I mean, I don't owe him anything. Uh, I just agreed to work with him, you know? I mean, I'm not Smilo Ren, just so you know. Just, I'm not, alright? And then she's like, okay, okay, you're not Smilo Ren or whatever, and, you know, she's like, but I'm thinking about being a good guy now, you know? I don't know, I just, uh... I don't know. I'm thinking about giving up this whole quest for revenge. I mean, I know they killed my mom and, I don't know, brainwashed my sister. Possibly molested her like they did me. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, she's just, you know, like, I'm thinking about being a good guy. And then, uh, you know, oh, yeah, Asian Ezra Miller's like, well, they're going to put you in prison or kill you or something. And she's like, oh, nah, they ain't going to put me in prison. I mean... Yeah, I killed two Jedi, but, you know, I'll, I'll give them some information. I'll be like, hey, uh, I know about Smilo Ren, okay? <laughs> I'll, I'll just tell them. So, oh, yeah, and then, uh, you know, uh, Asian Ezra Miller's like, oh, I found the Wookiee, by the way. You know, I just I found him in that jungle. I mean, it's a pretty big jungle, but I found him. And I don't know how long they were there. I mean, probably not that long. But, yeah, that's the main reason I'm thinking uh, Smilo, or, or, uh, Asian Ezra Miller is Smilo Ren, because, you know, obviously if he found him, then, you know, he could have easily killed him and then, you know, went back to May or whatever. <clears throat> but, yeah, then uh, we get this weird, I don't know, badger, uh, maybe a, a, a sea otter, I don't know what the hell he is, but... Uh, I guess he's a Jedi or something, which, I don't know, to me that's weird, because, like, he doesn't speak English or anything, and he doesn't look like he could fight. I don't know, it's weird. <clears throat> but yeah, apparently they have uh, the Wookiees, like, loincloth, and, uh, you know, they're like, here, sniff this. And yeah, like, he takes a good whiff of it, and, you know, he's like, mm, oh yeah, that smells good, you know. And then, uh, they go and track down the uh, fucking Wookiee man or whatever. And, uh, yeah, uh, Yord, I think he, uh, was, he did something in this episode. And I think he got embarrassed again. I want to say he was, uh, yeah, making a plan or something. And then, uh, the Padawan was like, oh, you know, I'm not listening or whatever. I'm just going to talk to my girlfriend here. And then, uh, he was like, do you have a problem with the plan or some shit? And, they're like, oh, no, sir, you know, like, just all smart aleck and shit. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, they go out there looking for the, the Wookiee guy or whatever, and then, uh, clearly these things look like giant bugs on a tree, you know? They look like roly-polies. I don't know how many of y'all know what a roly-poly is. It was like a bug that we used to have a lot of when I was in school or whatever, and you'd touch them and they'd turn into balls or whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, so... You know, uh, Osha decides to fondle one of them, and then, uh, you know, of course it, try, it, you know, wakes up or whatever, and uh, they say it was attracted to the lightsaber, which is weird. I don't know how they got that. I mean, it looked like it just flew at him, and then he chopped it in half. I mean, but, uh, yeah, I think it was Yord. He's like, it's, or maybe it was either Yord or the Apprentice, uh, Padawan or whatever, which is like, uh, it's attracted to light or something. I don't know how you got that. <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. After that, uh, you know, they go and uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, May traps uh, Ezra Miller in the foot trap, and that's when she's like, "I'm gonna become a good guy now." And he's like, "You're an idiot." And then she's like, "I don't care." And then uh, you know, they find uh, the Wookiee all chopped up and everything. And, uh, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, Maeve gets there first. Uh, she runs into the Beaver Man. Uh, Beaver Man starts screaming. And she's like, oh, God, no. And then she runs into the hut. Or, no, no, it was a spaceship. That's what it was, a spaceship. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, they're like, come on out with your hands up. Like, they're cops or something. And, uh, you know, at that time, Smilo Ren floats down behind them. And, uh, which... I don't know how he flies. I mean, you know, fucking uh, Palpatine couldn't fly, and, you know, uh, Darth Maul couldn't fly, and are they saying this guy is stronger than Darth Maul? I mean, I don't know, whatever. I mean, you know, of course, as 
you know, Leslie Headland or whatever, Leslie he or Lesbian Headlamp or whatever, you know, I'm sure they probably want their characters to be the best, which it wouldn't surprise me if uh, they end up making uh, Osha or May like the strongest female character in Star Wars. No, oh, no, 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 the strongest character in general, you know, considering they're like Anakin, where they're like born from the Force or something. Because they never did say, like, what her midi-chlorine readings were from uh, the blood sample. Which, you know, maybe that's the whole reason they kicked her out of the Jedi. Was They were like, oh my god, she's so powerful that if she were to become villainous, uh, that, you know, no one could stop her or something. You know, some stupid shit like that. But, yeah, so, you know, uh, Smilo Ren shows up and everyone ignites their lightsabers and... They don't come up with a battle plan. They're just like, charge! You know, which you would think they'd be like, holy shit. That is a... Or, well, actually, I don't even know if they would know what a Sith is at this point. You know? Unless uh, they just heard stories about them. You'd think they'd be like, oh my god. You know, it's a Sith. They haven't been around for 900 years. But no, they're just like, fuck it, charge! And then, you know, fucking Smilo Ren just blows them away. And, you know, it's... You know, that's the end of the episode. I mean, I don't know. I didn't know what to think about this. I mean, there's so much stupid shit. I mean, also, oh yeah, I forgot to, to mention that, yeah, Kiati Mundi is in the episode, which, you know, that's another thing that uh, he shouldn't be alive at this point. <clears throat> and uh, you would think that, uh, you know, they would try to stay away from, like, Star Wars canon and all that, but they don't care. I mean, I don't think Leslie Headland or whatever has seen, like, probably even a Star Wars movie, let alone, you know, The Phantom Menace. Because, you know, of course in The Phantom Menace, you got uh, Ki-Adi Mundi, who's like the, you know, the Sith have been extinct for over a millennia. Or a millennia, or a millennium, or something like that. I can't remember what he says. Uh, but yeah, so, apparently he was lying, I guess. He was just like, oh, yeah, they've been extinct. Uh, there definitely wasn't one, like, 80 years ago. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, and that's another thing. Uh, that I'm glad they didn't put Yoda in this fucking show, because God knows they would have fucked him up. Uh, I, I was making uh, some jokes online about, uh, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if they uh, made um, the green chick, I don't remember what her name is, you know, if they made her, like, Yoda, you know, like, Yoda was a female until he, he got a sex change or something, and then, you know, became a short, green old man once he aged or something. Or maybe the green chick is secretly Yaddle, you know, and then just as her species aged or whatever, they get shorter and you know, wrinklier or some shit. <clears throat> but yeah, they, they act like uh, the green chick, and that's another thing. She's a total bitch, by the way. Like, I mean, there's nothing likable about her character. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, they were saying, like, she's the head of the Jedi Council. I mean, they don't really say that she is, but the way that she acts, like, she acts like, you know, she's the one in charge. You know, she tells Kiati Mundi what to do, uh, she tells soul what to do, you know. Seems like, you know, she's calling the shots. And I'm thinking uh, she's the one who's going to have, like, the lightsaber whip or whatever, which, I mean, oh my god, to me that is the dumbest thing ever. I mean, a lightsaber whip? Who the fuck? No. That it, I mean, it's bad enough, like, trying to think, like, okay, you know, a lightsaber on its own is, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a fat or far-fetched theory, you know, like, you know, the laser doesn't go on forever, you know, somehow it, it extends to a certain point, but how the fuck do you make the light bend, you know, it's like, it's not a rope, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know, it's just, it's stupid, I can't even wrap my head around it, it doesn't even seem like it would be a good weapon to use, I mean, basically, you have a pretty good chance of cutting your own head off, or just slicing yourself in half, I mean, yeah, it, it's dumb, 
I think it's one of the worst ideas they've ever come up with. And you can't even, like, hold it like a regular whip, you know? You like, because with the whips, you can kind of, like, grab the end of it or, you know, roll it up in your hands or something. Whereas the lightsaber whip, you have to just constantly be flinging it around and shit. Because if it rests on the ground, it's going to fucking, you know, like, melt the floor or some shit. So you'd have to, like, whip it and then turn it off, whip it, turn it off. <clears throat> But yeah, I guess uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about fucking the Acolyte so far. You know, Green Chick's a bitch. Uh, Yord, you know, he's he's a decent character, but uh, he gets shit on a lot. Uh, I think Asian Ezra Miller's the bad guy. Like I said, could be one of the moms, who knows. Uh, I don't like the sisters, May and Osha. I think they're boring as fuck. Um, glad the witches are dead. Um... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't stand the fucking Padawan uh, with the white hair and spiky things on her head. She's such a little know-it-all bitch, and, you know, it really just annoys the shit out of me. I mean, I hate her. You know, she's like, oh, I know better than everybody. And, you know, the fact that she, uh, like, what do you call it, like, disrespects the Yord, which, you know, he's a knight, and she's a Padawan. You'd think, you know, he could be like, you know, hey, I... I am your superior, you know. Listen to me, you little bitch. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Saul. I don't like Saul because uh, I feel like uh, he's, like, a bit of a wuss. Like, you know, he just... He kisses everybody, like, everybody's ass or whatever, except for, you know, Yord or whatever. He just, you know... he And he doesn't take anything seriously. He's just, like... You know, oh, you know, I believe you, and, you know, or he'll be like, okay, I'll do exactly what you say, Master Green Chick, or, you know, we're going to go with, uh, you know, the Padawan's plan, because, you know, she's just so brilliant and smart, you know, I mean, fucking hell, man, why doesn't Saul, you know, fucking, I mean, well, that's another thing, he doesn't come up with any plans himself, it just seems like he's there to fucking... Kiss ass. That's it. He's a kiss ass Jedi. And I, I hate that. I mean, I never did watch Squid Game, so I, I don't know. I, I just never really liked the actor. I know some people are like, oh, he was great in Squid Games or whatever, but I don't know. I didn't watch Squid Game, so all I have to, or I don't have any other reference for the character. I just, I don't know. I automatically just, just, just see this guy. Anyways, well, that's going to be it for my review of, you know, the Acolyte so far. I might talk about it some more, uh, especially if it gets funnier or something like that. You know, I might uh, do a video about uh, my idea for a Star Wars show, which I think uh, it would be really good, especially if you could make it like a Japanese anime. I was thinking, you know, like, what if you did a show about, like, a sexually frustrated Jedi who, like, uses the Force to perv on girls. You know, I think that'd be funny. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like, most of the Jedi, like, they must be, like, having blue balls all the time and shit, because, you know, you're not allowed to sleep with women, or... I don't even know if you're allowed to beat your own meat or whatever, because, you know, you think Yoda would be like, oh, you know, passion and lust and all that leads to the dark side or whatever, so, you know, you can't jerk off or have a girlfriend or... Anything like that, so, yeah. It's no wonder that, like, I mean, I'm surprised most of the Jedi aren't fucking, like, killing people, like, you know, just so frustrated all the time, like, fucking asshole, I'm gonna beat your fucking ass and all this other shit. But, <clears throat> anyways, alright. I'll, uh, catch you guys later. Peace.